been on this morning. Uh, you thought it not robbery to be with us here at the Second Macedonia Baptist Church, where we are all virtual on this morning. We are so appreciative that you are with us on today. We had to make an adjustment. Um, we are totally virtual on this morning because of a little issue we had at the church, but we thank God for the use of technology. I am the Reverend Dr. Harold R. Jolly, and I have the humble pleasure of serving as pastor of this wonderful collective that is found um, on Zoom, who, who is now streaming with us on Facebook Live. We are grateful for all of them uh, that have tuned in on this morning. We've been lifting up the name of Jesus since nine o'clock this morning together for worship. Uh, if we were able to be in the sanctuary, we would be at 1301 West Ruscombe Street in the Logan section of Philadelphia. Uh, and I'm sure the community would be hearing us because we would be loud and rowdy. Amen. Uh, this is normally our Black History Sunday. We usually have on our African garb and we're doing special things that reflects our history. Um, so we will be making that adjustment and we will be having all of the presentations on next week. Uh, but we are so glad that we still have a preacher for this morning. Um, we have a guest preacher by the name of Reverend Jermaine Heath. Uh, a very true man of God. I met Brother Heath, Reverend Heath, some time ago. Um, his friendship has been consistent. Uh, his conversation invokes a lot of thought. Uh, and I'm glad that his schedule has been freed up to be with us on this morning. Uh, he pastored for 12 years at the St. Paul Chapel Baptist Church. Uh, he's been preaching for over 20 years. Uh, he is now an associate with uh, Dr. Damon Jones at Bible Way Baptist Church, and we are familiar with Dr. Damon Jones. Uh, for those that have not heard uh, Reverend Heath before, I want you to know that you are in for a treat. He is anointed. Uh, he definitely hears from heaven. He knows how to rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, so I introduce to some and present to others our uh, pontificator on this morning, none other than the Reverend Jermaine Heath. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God some praise for our preacher on this morning. Amen. God bless you. Can you hear me? Amen. Uh, am I? Yes, you're I good. You're good. Okay. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be thankful in it. Uh, I am glad to be with you as your pontificator, as pastor. Uh, I have just uh, stated, um, it is good to be here in the presence of the Second Macedonia Baptist Church. And to all of you who are viewing on Zoom, on virtually, it is good to be here. Hey, Sister Valerie, I see you. Um, thank you so much for your warm uh, welcome and for this worship experience. Um, <clears throat> I was here uh, with you guys when we were in the sanctuary um, several years ago. And so I thank Pastor uh, for allowing me to be here to share with you once again on this Black Heritage Sunday, or as our brother um, stated in the remix, the throwback third Sunday. Amen. And so um, praise God for you and praise God for all of you um, here today. Um, thank God for all of the prayers um, and the scripture and the worship that has gone forth this morning. Uh, today, I want to preach from the book of Genesis, and it seems like uh, everything is kind of lining up. Um, so I'll be coming from the book of Genesis, Old Testament, chapter 26. Um, today, as our um, scripture um, reading and our sermonic presentation, so Genesis chapter 26, um, I, I love being on virtual, but I love even more being in the sanctuary. I wish I could see you all um, this morning um, and just feel that energy, that spirit. Um, but we thank God for virtual. Amen. So uh, Genesis chapter 26, uh, starting at the 17th verse. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 26. Uh, starting at the 17th verse, and we will go down to verse 25, chapter 26, verse 17 to 25. Here with us, read the word of God. So Isaac moved away to Gur Valley, where he set up their tents and settled down. He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. 
Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. Isaac's servants also dug in the, in the Gur Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. But then the shepherds from Gur came and claimed the spring. This is our water, they said, and they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Isaac, which means argument. Isaac's men then dug another well, but again, there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another one. This time, there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Roboacha, which means open space. For he said, at last, the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. From there, Isaac moved to Beersheba where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father, Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place and his servants dug another well. And looking at verse number 22, abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehobo, which means open space. For he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. Amen. The word of God to the people, God, thanks be to God. Let us look to the Lord for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we do thank you so much for, again, as it has already been stated, this is the day that you have made, and we are thankful and grateful for it. We pray, God, that you will bless us as we enter into the word. Thank you, God, for worship. Thank you for pastor. Thank you for the people of Second Macedonia. We ask, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would bless us as we sit attentively waiting to hear from you, Lord. I pray, God, that you would hide me behind the cross, that people may not see me nor hear me, but that they may see and hear Jesus Christ, our Lord. May you be glorified. May you be praised. May someone ask, what must they do to be saved? For it's in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Our hearts do say amen and amen. And amen. Uh, today I want to tag this text and attempt to preach from the thought, we're going old school to do a new thing going old school to do a new thing, going old school to do a new thing. No matter who you are, you will all discover, or we will all discover that conflict is an unavoidable thing. Basically, everybody isn't going to like you. You are not going to like everybody else. There will be people who will rub you the wrong way, but guess what? You rub people the wrong way. Because the bottom line is everybody will, uh, will come in contact with conflict. All of us know people who work our good last nerve. We know people who we would rather not speak to. All of us know people who don't like us. Big Mama said, if you remember, that they hated Jesus, sugar. And if they hated Jesus with no cause, guess what? they'll hate you with no cause. And I come to find out, church, that whenever you find people that hate you without a cause, there can be nothing that you can do to cause them to want to like you back. Why? Because conflict is unavoidable. You know, we have all kinds of conflicts in life. We have home conflict because ain't no conflict like home conflict because home conflict just don't stop. We have work conflict, we have neighborhood conflict, we have relationship conflict, and we even have political conflict. You won't agree with everybody, everybody will not agree with you. We will even fall out with people who we say we love and like. 
In other words, we all will have conflict. But the question is, with all that conflict going on, the question remains, how do you and I handle our conflict? Well, the good news this morning is that if you go old school with God, God will give you a fresh perspective on how to handle your conflict so you can do a new thing. In other words, God will reorientate your perspective on a bad, old, a bad situation by causing you to go old school so that you can get a fresh new idea so that you can do a new school thing. Well, if you don't believe me, come to our text this morning. I will try not to hold you long because the Bible lets us know we encounter a biblical character by the name of Isaac. All of us know Abraham is Isaac's daddy, but few of us know little about Isaac. For all of us know about Abraham, that trailblazer of faith. We know about all that Abraham has done. But if you ask some people who is Isaac, the only thing they can say is Isaac is the, uh, the son of Father Abraham. Many of us don't know Isaac this morning. So Isaac said, yo, Keith, listen, I want you to say my name, say my name, say my name. Why? Because people need to know my story about who I am in order to overcome conflict in their life. For everybody knows about only knows only one particular thing about Isaac, and that is when Isaac was going up with his father to Mount Mor Morai. For Isaac says, listen, he, I was in an impossible situation to the human eye. Why? Because my testimony is, is that God is able to do the impossible whenever you give God your life. Isaac said, listen, I'm a living testimony that when your life is on the line, you can get back up from what has tried to take you down. Because you know my story, he. My story is, is that my father took me up to the mountain in order to kill me. But as soon as I lay down on the altar, ready to be, ready to get sliced and diced, God appeared to me and God provided for me. You know my story, Pastor. It's a story about what God can do when others try to take you down. In other words, when people try to take you down, God can raise your life right back up. And I wish I was in the sanctuary this morning because I know there's some people virtually who can testify. There have been folks that have tried to take me down. But the good thing is, is that when I called on the name of Jesus, when I called on God's name, God had and gave provision in order for me to get back up from what people had tried to lay me down. And that's my story. But my story doesn't just stop there, Pastor. My story is, is a, gets a little bit more deeper. In, or, in other words, when you look at chapter 25 on the outset of this text, you will see that in verse 1, there's a famine in the land. The Bible lets you and I know that there's a famine in the land. And so bad was this situation that there was situation that the people could not eat. Why? Because whenever there was a famine in the land, it affected the people's economy. Why? Because the people economy was based on the agriculture of the land. And so for there to be no rain or no dew was equivalent to being in the economic depression. There's a famine in the land, church, that's, and, and that's where we are in our text today. But let us all be honest with ourselves, that as, good, that as good as some things may be going for some people, we still live in the classic words of that phrase or that quote that says, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. In other words, we have some people who are doing quite well for themselves, but yet there's still a famine in our land. Why do I say that? Because according to Georgetown University Center of Children and Family, it is reported that there is 44 million children in the United States that are still without health care. There's a famine in the land because as of February 10th, 
2022, we still have an unemployment rate rate of 1.0 in the United States. There's a famine in our land. When we look at African Americans, Latino and Asians, Native Americans, and women who own businesses receive substantially lower portions of government contracting dollars, it lets us know that there's a famine in our land. Why in the world do we wonder why they, uh, there aren't any strong African-American businesses in our community and in the economy? Because there's a famine in our land. The poor are still poor. The pockets of the middle class are getting hit. But yet there are CEOs on Wall Street who fill their pockets up with million dollar bonuses. Why? Because there's a famine in our land. But the Bible says Isaac had good enough sense, Pastor, to know that whenever there's trouble, you need to go old school because old school will show you some things that new school, that new situations just can't handle. What do I mean by that? Isaac, the text says, we dug the wells that had been dug in the days of his father, Abraham. In other words, Isaac was going back to what his father had did in the past. Now, if you are any type of a thinking Christian, you're asking yourself this morning, why did Isaac redig the wells? Well, the Bible says that the Philistines out of envy filled the wells with some dirt. The Philistines were hating on Abraham and didn't want Isaac to receive their inher his inheritance. And so what they did was they dirtied the water in the wells that had been dug by Father Abraham. They didn't put, they put dirt where there had been fresh water, which was dug by their ancestors. And I guess that's where I want to park here this morning. Because during African American or Black History Month, as we look at the history of our people and how we have been fed according to James W. Lowen in his book, Lies That My Teacher Told Me, he says that we have all been fed an ethnocentric chair leading. In other words, in our history textbook. There are some of you who may have read Lowen's book, Lies That My Teacher Told. Well, if you haven't, I would suggest you pick that book up and read it. Why? Because he lets us know that sadly, history in this country is nothing but an ethnocentric cheerleading where we play up lies about certain individuals and call them heroes. We play up that Thomas Jefferson wrote that, and we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But we go past and fail to realize that Thomas Jefferson also had 175 slaves. That's right. We play up the fact that George Washington was the father of this nation, but we also miss out on the fact that he was a slave trader. And so in the real sense church or second Macedonia, we are, our wells have been dirty. But Lowen continues on in the book and states that in the year 2007, we celebrated the quadroon centennial, which is 400 year anniversary of the settling of Jamestown in Virginia, as if that was the first actual settlement. But Lowen says that that's not the first actual Actual settlement because if we go back to 1526, we all will discover that some African slaves and Spaniards, led by the explorer Lucas Vasquez de Elano, settled in the Northeast, which was which which would become later the United States of America. When they settled, the African slaves revolted against the Spaniards, who were also stricken with sickness. Then they settled with the indigenous people, which is the actual first true settlers. Lowen says the reason why we need to know this is because we 
disengage ourselves from the notion that African slaves just came into slavery when they were kicking and screaming and saying, before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to be with my Lord and be set free. But hold up, y'all. It gets better than this because Lowen says, do your, do your life research and you'll discover that some of the stuff has been left out of history. In other words, the wells have been dirtied for our education of Mother Africa is a dirty well. It will let us know that many of us in this country are ashamed of Africa because as if we were a backwards, uncivilized group of people. Because when the Europeans got amnesia or Europeans got amnesia and forgot that it was the Moors people of West Africa who bought their education that gave birth to the Renaissance movement in Europe. It was the Moors people, the dark-skinned people who reminded that the Europeans that the city of Timbuktu, which is the first HBCU, existed as the center of higher learning long before we had a Harvard, a Yale, and an Oxford University. That's in our mother Africa. But y'all, the wells are dirty because of how we mistreated mother Africa. The wells are dirty because Africa was robbed, robbed, excuse me, of robbed and through slavery, robbed of its rich material through colonialism, and now suffers the negative marketing that is done by people in the United States and across the world. The wells have been dirty. But even in this country, as African Americans, the wells are have been dirty. Because did you not know that Jackie Robinson was the first Black to play in Major League Baseball? Blacks were playing in the Major Leagues before 1889. Why do I say that? Because there was a brother by the name of Moses Fleetwood Walker on May 1st of 1885 was the first black major leaguer who played for the Toledo Blue Stockings. Did you know that up until 1911, 1911 that 15 of 28 Kentucky Derby winners were African American jockeys because of their success in 1911 in Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky, these African Americans from, uh, were cut off from riding in the Kentucky Derby. In other words, our waters have been dirtied even in America. And as long as the waters or wells are dirty, sadly and shamefully and sinfully, we get images in our classrooms and on our TV screens that either don't include us, distort us, or always show us struggling in this life. As long as I don't see myself in a positive light, it hinders me from being and doing new school things. But I stopped by this morning morning real quick y'all to holler at somebody to let you know that every now and then you need to go old school on somebody you need to go back to where we came from so that you can know who you are so that you can do a new school thing well this morning y'all can I go old school on you let's go old school so we can get a better perspective and do some new school things out of the context of conflict well, the first thing the text will let us know is that when you go old school, I'm loving this, you'll discover that what you have going for you will always create haters for you. <laughs> I love that. What you have going for you will always cause some enemies to come at you. In other words, what you got going on for yourself will always not only attract positive people, but it'll also attract some negative people. Some folks just don't want to see you do good because, or don't want to see you doing good things for yourself. Isaac says, I can testify to that because Isaac's servants have 
had redug the wells that had been dug by his father, Abraham. All of a sudden, some herdsmen, the Bible says, come up and said, these wells belong to us. Do you see what just happened? Isaac redug the well of his father, but then there are some new people coming in trying to take claim on what they had already done. They say, listen, these wells belong to us. Now, Isaac did the digging, but these folks are trying to claim the water that Isaac has dug up understand this and understand it good that the wells had been there all along and these lazy unequipped jackers wanted to claim something that they did not work for and i know y'all hollering now i know some people just like that some people who will try to take credit for what you have already done. And haven't we seen that in this world and in this United States, that whenever people who have been kissed by the sun rays have created the in, in, intuitively created new sounds and new systems, there has always been a group that has tried to hijack what we've already created. I know I'm preaching. Y'all ain't got to say amen. There are always somebody that's trying to overtake what we've already, what we already created. Understand that everybody won't get happy, that everybody will try to claim the success of what you have already done. Because long after they had created the, and we dug the wells, here comes some people trying to take claim of their success. Isaac did the digging. Then a fight, the text says, broke out. See, some people will come at you because of how God is blessing you. It's what you have going for you that creates your enemies to come against you. Understand, church, that everybody won't get happy when you're getting blessed. Matter of fact, the more you get blessed, the, the more people will the more people can't stand you. The more people will talk about you. The more people will make up lies on you. The more people will have all kinds of negative things to say about you. Why? Get this. It's because often it's what God does for you that sets people off to come against you. Preach, Pastor Heath, because it shows them up for who they not. Don't you know people like that, that when you start doing something that they should have done, they'll get mad at you. Why? Not because you're good at it, but because you're showing them up for who they're not. And that's what Isaac is doing. Isaac is saying, listen, I know who I am and I know who God has made me. And so I know the perspective and the value of going old school to learn something so that I could do a new thing. But understand again, that whenever you decide to do something new, it won't just attract your praisers, but it'll attract your haters. It'll attract people who just won't like you all because you're doing something new. But now, y'all, the text says that when they start fighting over the well, if the text lets us know, Isaac left the well and did a Jay-Z and said, on to the next one. Isaac says, I made on to the next one way before Jay-Z made it. And so when they started arguing over this well, I said, it's time to go and dig another well. In other words, church, Isaac is trying to teach us that there are some battles that we don't need to fight over. We just need to go on to the next one. Why are you worried about and fighting over something that's not worth fighting over? If they want to fight over it, let them be foolish enough to fight over it. Why? Because if God can give you the creative genius to dig this first well, then sure enough, God can give you the creative genius to go and dig another well. That's why it don't make no sense to fight with people over silly things. For I heard somebody say that if they fight with fools, people from a distance won't know who is who. In other words, I got that one from Sean Carter, is that when you're fighting with folks, um, people from the outside won't know who's the fool. And so instead of fighting with a fool, you might as well back up and go dig another well. Isaac says, that's what I did. When they started fighting over this well, I said, it's not worth it. Why? Because some battles are not worth 
fighting. You just need to leave some people in some situations alone. Isaac dug and they fought and he moved on and dug and got some more water. Remember y'all, now this is the time of a famine, but wherever Isaac dug, get this, God blessed his work and his faith. Y'all missing this. I'm getting happy over here. Uh, remember, it's a famine. But when Isaac digs another well, God produces more water in the midst of a famine. Ah, here's your shout, church. Uh, back in biblical antiquity, whenever you name a well, that was your title deed. In other words, when Isaac named dug the well, he continued to name the well. Y'all missed it. Uh, let me help you. Uh, when Isaac dug the well, he named the well. In other words, when he named the well, it's putting his name on it. Um, that means that even though he's leaving the well that they're fighting over, as long as his name is on it, they can fight all they want. It still belongs to him. Mm. Uh, Isaac says, y'all fighting over this well, but I named the well. In other words, it's my title deed. That's right, Lisa. I got ownership over this. And whenever there's ownership, you can try to claim it. You can go forward. But guess what? It still belongs to me. Preach, y'all. Uh, Isaac says, don't fight over a situation, name the situation. And whenever you name the situation, you may be long removed from that situation. But when new folks come, they won't see the people who's possessing the situation right now. They'll only see the name of who owns the situation. In other words, fight all you want to. But guess what? God says, it still belongs to me. God says, you can fight over whatever you want to, but this belongs to me. Text says, they're fighting over it. And God is so good that even when you're in conflict, if you have enough spiritual sense, you'll say, I'm not going to waste my quality time on unqualified people. I'm not going to give up major time to minor people. Why? Because God can always bless you in new places. Now, check this. The Bible says that Isaac gets, the ne gets to the next well, but no one shows up. Hold on. He fights over what he digs one well, and they're fighting. He digs a second well, and they're fighting. But the third well, yeah. The third well, when he gets to it, he digs it. There's no fighting over it. Mm. No one shows up to this well. Notice the names of the well, y'all. The first well he calls Esek, which is strife or quarrel or dispute. The next well he names Sitna, which is adversary or opposition. The next well, there's no fighting. And he names it Rehoboam, which is a broad place of freedom. Look at what he said. The Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in this land or in the New Living Translation, we now have space enough to prosper. Mm. Uh, God used strife and opposition to move Isaac to a broad place. Y'all, um, God is so good in that he can use your strife and your haters in your life and those who come against you to give you more than what you ever thought you can ever imagine. See, folks don't understand that the more they come against you, the more God makes room for you. Oh, you don't, oh, you thought you fired me? No, you just set me free to find another career that God's been trying to bless me with. You thought that you 
threw me out your life. No, you just threw me into a new situation so that God can bless me in my better situation. God says, don't worry about when people give you a pink slip. That's just an indication to let you know you're in a turning point so that God can do a new thing in your life and cause you to be better at where you're going than where you were. God says, listen, I'm going to bless you. Let people come against you. Let strife come against you because greater is he that is within me than he that is in this world. God says, don't let strife blind you to the broad place that God is trying to take you to. But y'all, secondly, God says, let me help you out for the last point of the text. God says, let me help you out in that when you go old school, and this is our last point, when you go old school, you'll discover that God works the night shift so that he can give you an old school promise to handle your current situation. I need to say that again. God works the night shift giving you an old school promise to handle your current situation. Look at what the text says. The, that night, the Lord appeared to Isaac. God said, I'm not going to work the day shift. I'm going to take the night shift. And Isaac, I'm going to appear to you at night. God appeared to Isaac and says, look, Isaac, don't be scared because I'm going to bless you. You're going to be the father of a great nation according to the promise that I made to your daddy, Abraham. And the reason why you're blessed today is because somebody prayed for you. Yeah, somebody prayed for us today. God is answering the prayers of some mother, of some father, of some grandfather, of some grandmother. Today, the reason why you have what you have, um, blessed by what you are blessed with, is because God has blessed you through the prayers of somebody else. You're not here because you've always done the right thing. You're here today because there's some person in your life that prayed for you that you don't even know and that you're blessed. Why? Why? Because of their prayers. And as a consequence, the text lets us know that Isaac builds an altar and calls on the name of the Lord. And he pitches his tent there and his servants dug another well. Isaac, y'all, had his priorities and priorities and strength. As I go, as I leave you, Isaac said, listen, I know that whenever God enters in a situation, you need to have your priorities straight. What was Isaac's priorities? One, Isaac built an altar and called on God. Second, Isaac pitched a tent, but then Isaac, thirdly, dug a well. You saying, what kind of priorities are those? Well, let me help you. God or Isaac had spiritual sense, but then Isaac had family sense, but then Isaac had handling your business sense. In other words, Isaac says priorities are set up like this. God, family, and then handling your business. And when Isaac does that, Isaac is blessed to be able to do a new school situation. He goes and digs another well. Well, y'all, I told you I'm out of here. But let, as, I, as I move on, my sons, I, I want to just share with you that my sons love hip-hop music. Yeah, especially my younger son, Jordan. Jordan loves some hip-hop music. Me and Jordan just two days ago was coming back from getting our haircuts. And Jordan said, Dad, I like hip-hop, Dad. He said, but I don't like that new stuff. I like more of that old hip-hop music. I said, son, that's right. Your daddy was brought up on hip-hop. Your daddy was raised up during the 80s and 90s. And so I know what you mean. Old school hip hop is the hip hop. He said, yeah, dad, I like old school hip hop. I said, but son, don't you know that the new school stuff that's being played, even music, has to go back and sample old school situations. He said, daddy, what do you mean? I said, whenever you hear something new school, it has already sampled or remixed an 
old school situation. I love some old school music, y'all. There's just some old school stuff I love. Now, I know you probably judging me, but I hope that you're not. But I love old school situations. I love old school songs like Loving You Has Made My Life Much Sweeter, Baby. Baby, since I've got you, everything is all right. Sometimes I want to shout. Sometimes I want to scream. I just want to tell the world about it. There's a girl on my mind. Your love is so good. Y'all, that's old school music. But if you want to go old school consciousness, you need to pick up Marvin Gaye, who said, Mother, mother, there's too many of us crying. Brother, brother, there's too many of us dying. You know we got to find a way to bring some love in here today. What's going on? That's old school, y'all. But as love as I love, as much as I love old school music, as much as I love old school consciousness, there's nothing like God school music. Yeah, there's nothing like when you hear a song from Almighty God, a song that says, they said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I'd never amount to anything, but I'm glad to know that I'm on my way. I'm going more and more each day. Then listen to what she said. There were many that started out with me, but now they're going astray. But guess what? I'm still holding on. Bless you, Lord. I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on each day. And you got to go old school, y'all, to make a new school era. Because when you go old school, you'll hear the words given to Isaac. Don't be afraid. I am with you. In other words, and pass the heat remix, and I'm done. That just simply says, I got your back. Whenever, when you come against, when people come against you, I got your back. When they try to take your success, I got your back. When they lie and cheat on you, I got your back. When you struggle with which way to go, I got your back. When you go through the waters, I got your back. When you go through the fire, I got your back. Second Macedonia, whenever you find yourself getting your waters dirty, God says, don't be afraid. Why? Because I got your back. Peace. And may the Lord bless you. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God an awesome praise on today. Let's thank God for the messenger uh, who has dumped on us on today. He has challenged us. To, uh, he has provoked some thought and he has brought us to the cross to lift up the name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Heath, uh, for blessing us on today. Uh, you have reminded us that there are some things we need to go back uh, in order for us to do a new thing. And I believe that God always wants to do a new thing in our lives. There's nothing that we can go through that God can't handle. He wants to prosper us. He wants us to move forward. But I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, you can't move forward if you don't have a relationship with him. And if there's somebody out there on today, man, woman, boy, or girl, you have tuned in. You have not tuned in by mistake. This message was for you to remind you that as Pastor Heath was closing it, he says, God has your back. He wants to remind you that there's nothing that you can go through that God can't handle. Amen. So if there's someone out there on today, man, woman, boy, or girl, if you don't know Jesus for the pardoning of your sins, if you don't have your own personal relationship with him, I want you to know on today uh, that there's an invitation to discipleship that will go forward, that's inviting you to have your own personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. If there's somebody out there on today that has not made that public confession, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and God raised him up from the dead. The Bible says that you shall be saved. What does that mean to be saved? It means that God will rescue you out of whatever situation you are dealing with. And if there's somebody out there on today that needs to be rescued, I want you to know that we have someone that can get in the midst of any situation and pull you out of it. If you don't know him for yourself, this is your invitation. Man, woman, boy, or girl, come to know Jesus. Come just as you are. Don't wait to try to get cleaned up because he's the one that's able to clean you up.
If there's somebody else out there on today, you came to know the Lord for the pardoning of your sins, but for some reason, life beat you up so much that you said that God turned his back on you. I want you to know that God never turns his back on his people. Amen. He's protecting you. Why do you think that you have not been taken out? Why do you think that you have not been destroyed? Because God has been keeping you. He's protecting you. He's making sure uh, that the enemy is not destroying you. I want you to know on today that there's still time for you to recommit your life to the Lord. There might be somebody else out there on today, man, woman, a boy, a girl, you're in relationship, but for some reason you don't have a church home. You don't have a place where you can be rooted and grounded and taught the word of God. I want you to know on today, my dear brother, I want you to know on today, my dear sister, Second Macedonia is not a perfect church, but we serve a perfect God that has a perfect will. Amen. And we're trying to serve that perfect God. Uh, we want you to know on today uh, that the doors of the church never close. If you're out there on today, go to our website. Uh, if we were in the church, we would have our lower third, but the website, somebody put this in the chat for me. Thank you, Deacon Val, www.sm bapt.org. If you're on Facebook Live, put that in the chat for me. Go to that website. You'll see a link for digital discipleship. You fill out that information. We will have someone contact you um, and talk to you about the decision that you have made to surrender your all to Christ. Uh, we want you to come. Don't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. God wants you to come right now. Amen. We pray that you receive that invitation. And as always, we want to encourage you, my dear brother, encourage you, my dear sister, to sow into this wonderful ministry that God has entrusted to us. Uh, you do understand that ministry does require financial support. Uh, when Jesus was traveling, he had a treasurer with him that took care of the expenses. Even the Bible tells us uh, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wines. In other words, uh, God is entrusting us uh, with some uh, prosperity, but at the same time, he wants us to give back to him what belongs to him. And when we do that, we're honoring the system that has been set up by God. And then when we honor the system set up by God, God will give us more than we could ever imagine. And if you're out there on today and God has let, let, placed it on your heart to be able to sow into this ministry, we want you to go to our website. Once again, you'll see the various ways uh, that you can give. You can give digitally. Um, you can text by giving. You can mail it to the church. Uh, you can drop it off to the church. Uh, uh, we want you to know that we are good stewards over what God has entrusted us with. We do the will of God. We go outside the walls and be a blessing to his people. And I want you to know on today that you would be sowing good seed in good ground. Can I say that one more time? You will be sowing good seed in good ground. We pray that you have been blessed on today. Um, Pastor Heath, thank you so much for blessing us um, on today. You have done an excellent job, and we pray that God restores you for everything that you have poured in, into us. We pray that God gives back to you more than you could ever imagine. We're going to ask Pastor Heath uh, to bless us and close us out with our benediction. Amen. Again, thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you, Second Macedonia. Um, I had a wonderful time sitting in this room by myself, preaching and uh, sharing with y'all, as you may have seen. Um, I thank you. I, I cannot um, just wait to be able to fellowship with you uh, when y'all get back in your sanctuary. I'm going to make it my business, Pastor, to come and to worship with y'all, um, to, see, to see you and First Lady and the family. Um, again, though, thank you, everyone, um, for your prayers and uh, for your preaching chat comments. Um, thank you so much. And I pray that the Lord will continue to bless all of you, um, whether by Zoom or virtual and Facebook land, um, that God will continue to let you know that sometimes you got to go old school to get a perspective to do a new school thing, that God will continue to bless us, even when they try to claim our success, even when they try to dirty our waters, God will always provide. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Thank you, Father, again, for 
what our ears have heard, what our eyes have seen. Thank you for worship this morning. Uh, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, that you are not only the God of our history, but you are the God of our present and of our future. We thank you so much, Lord, for Jesus. We thank you for the spirit of uh, your spirit. And we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will continue to bless us and be with us. Go with us, Lord, as you use our minds, our hearts, and our spirit, and our strength to be able to do new things, Lord. We thank you for who you have made us to be, Lord. Thank you that we are created in your likeness and in your image, and that, God, you have given us all creativity um, to be able, Lord, to do and create things, Lord, to be able to help people move on in their lives and in their situations. We ask simply, Lord, that you will use us, that you will be glorified. Father, again, pray for a pastor and the uh, second uh, Macedonia, that you will continue to bless them and strengthen them as they continue, Lord, to glorify you in the name of Jesus. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God forevermore. Let all God's people say amen and amen, and amen. God bless you. Amen, everyone. Y'all have a wonderful day, and we pray that God continues to be with you.